we continue to celebrate the joy, the mystery that the that our Lord's Nativity would bring about in our life. So this is our fourth day in our eighth day celebration of the Nativity. Of course, we started with something very, very festive, colorful. Now, we hear about the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under. Why two years old? You know, when we think of the flight to Egypt, yung pong pagtakas nila, pagpunta sa Egypt, maybe we imagine it will just take a couple of days. Malapit lang. No. From Bethlehem to Egypt, that's more than 500 kilometers. So it took maybe more than two to three years. Hindi yung kadali. You know, and they have to rest and Joseph cannot just keep begging. He was a carpenter. So his trade was something that was always needed by people. So maybe they will stop in a place and stay there for a couple of days, work so that they have something to eat. They could, Joseph could, could feed the family. So it was not that easy. Yung flight to Egypt, it must have taken about three years, siguro po. Okay? Because we are talking of more than 500 kilometers and uh, of course we are talking of Mary and the child Jesus child Jesus is just a baby you cannot just keep traveling so anyway my dear friends what's the message of the feast that we are celebrating today the feast of the holy innocence we will always have bullies in the world People who will show their power, their might, through force and violence, just like hero. And yet, we will always, God will always, you know, uh, work it out in His way, in His simple ways. He does not use violence. In simple ways. During the time of Moses, Pharaoh ordered the killing of all male babies. They were, the, the Hebrews were becoming numerous. So they became afraid. That is Pharaoh and the Egyptians. So they were asked to kill. They were, they killed the male. And yet, we know from this incident, there came out a man who became the leader that is Moses who was saved in this killing again how many were killed maybe there were not that many of course every life is very important maybe about 20 you might think by the hundreds no so uh, Bethlehem and its vicinity and yet, out of this would come out a Savior, Jesus. So God has His own way of fulfilling His promise, His plans. And yet, the first reading, that's from the St. John, Apostle Evangelist, reminds us of how we have to be firm, steady in our belief in our commitment to Jesus, the Savior of the world. So John is uh, fond of dualism, contrast. There is light, darkness, truth, lies, good, evil. And so he makes it clear, those who want to follow Jesus, those who are united with Jesus, they should live under his light. You cannot mix light and darkness. No. Uh, 
uh, one who lives in the light of Jesus will live in truth. Because if a person does not live in the truth, does not walk, uh, he doesn't walk actually in the light. Truth, light, good, they are interrelated. So you cannot just uh, mix, as I said, lies, you know, darkness, you know, and evil. Now, those are separate. So uh, John is very clear about it. Our commitment to Jesus must be expressed in the way we live, the way we talk, the way we think. So being blessed with Jesus means to acknowledge that we belong to God. And belonging to God means doing what is right, what is holy, so that we can reflect His goodness, the truth in our life. So let's pray that we will always be firm in our belief. Yes, there is no more massacre of the innocents, but it's still, it's still going on. We have abortion. Those who abort babies, that's killing the innocent. So we pray that people will be conscious about the sacredness of life, life as a gift, life as coming from God. Life is to be treasured from womb to tomb. So we ask the Lord to continue to help us be firm in living our faith in protecting life. Life as a gift from the Lord, life as a gift that we should treasure. Amen.